Hey traders, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group with your weekly video on the trade recap as well as what I think are the most interesting option trades, swing trade ideas uh, going forward. So let's just do a quick recap of the S&P chart. You know, always want to make sure, always want to look at the overall trend. You know, even though we are still in a stock pickers market and it's even at extremes um, from this is uh, JCJ. This is uh, the applied correlation of the S&P 500. Uh, so basically what this does is it shows how the components of the S&P are moving amongst each other. Uh, we, are at, we are at lows right now in applied correlations. So, you know, you always want to take a look at what type of market you're in so that you're trading the right products. Uh, when there is a higher correlation, when everything is moving all the same, you know, you're in a, you could trade futures. You're in a higher, uh, higher volatility environment. Uh, right now, we're in a stock breakers market. Implied correlations are very low, meaning you can have longs, you can have shorts on, and uh, you could do well in this type of environment. So that being said, let's look at the S&P chart. A lot of consolidation. Um, you know, I think every trader has been familiar with with this the last couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of almost, um, you know, almost doji type environments. Very small ranges. Um, you know, been a, it's been a you know, if you're an index trader, probably a very very or a futures trader, very very frustrating environment to be in. Um, we just haven't moved too much in the last couple of weeks. Does this make sense for this type of year? Uh, for this. Um, for the, the for the part of the year that we're currently in, um, I think it does. You know, earnings season. What happens in the earnings season? A lot of the buyback programs are are blacked out for that time frame. So you know, what's been causing a great lift in the market? You know, kind of a backstop is most of the S and P uh, companies have buyback plans. Um, unfortunately, they've been turned off or they're turned off right around earnings season. You know, you're going to start to see those buyback programs come back on. Um, you know, and I know from my trading background, um, you know, how do these buyback programs work? You know, they're basically, uh, you know, companies who have these programs, they basically, you know, stick these in, a, in an algo. So like something like a VWAP algo, you know, these programs kind of buy all, you know, throughout the day, unless they have a, you know, a, a natural where they actually take the order out of, out of the uh, algo machine and, and cross some shares. Um, but for the most part, they're essentially just buying the machines all day long. So that could be one of the reasons why we've just haven't seen a lot of momentum here in the last couple of weeks. And also just, you know, besides the buyback machines not being on, it's um, it's also, you know, every day you've got just a, a huge amount of companies reporting and, you know, everyone's trying to figure out if the earnings are good or the earnings are bad. So, we, so always keep that in mind during earnings season. Um, you know, we've seen this before in the past. Okay, so what did we get on Friday? We got a positive jobs report. You know, the good thing about the positive jobs report is it, good news equals good news. Um, why did good news equals good news? Because you could take a look at what the Fed Fund Futures, and I actually took a snapshot of this. Uh, this is Fed Fund Futures, where they were before the jobs number came out. And, you know, virtually, just make sure you can see this, for the September meeting, Fed Fund Futures were, uh, had a probability of only 18% of a interest rate hike, a quarter basis point interest rate hike in September <clears throat> and even in December, 37%. So with the positive jobs report, did this change a lot? Uh, let me bring up what it looks like now. Uh, not too much, you know, only, you know, it did move up, but you're talking about a move up from 18%, 26% of odds of a rate hike uh, movement, you know, that did fall uh, because the Bank of England did meet and they lowered interest rates. Um, they also announced more quantitative easing. So it kind of has a global um, feel to it. And, uh, you know, I think that's why the probability actually went down, um, you know, uh, basically last week. So, you know, this is one of the biggest um, risks, I think, to the marketplace, but however, you know, it looks really good, you know, so even with that really positive jobs report, it didn't move the needle too much, um, especially because of where interest rate, uh, the probability of an interest rate hike expectations were, um, you know, before the jobs report. So pretty good, you know, obviously the other, you know, risk right now to the market is, is, is global growth fears. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, we're kind of the market's in a sweet spot right now. I think that with no hike coming in the next couple months, um, you know, it's a good place, I think, to be in stocks. So let's just go through again that, that S&P chart. The last time that we had 
the uh, positive jobs report, you know, the, the, the previous jobs report was very strong as well. That was on 7.8. Let's look at the price action. Then we had a big move up there in the S&P. And then we also had a, lot of, a little bit of follow through action the next couple of days, I think for one, two, three, four. So that's kind of what I'm thinking um, for next week. We could see a little bit of follow through move just like we did on the last jobs report. Um, however, you have to keep in mind that, you know, August is a week, is a seasonally weak month. So you always want to keep that in mind, what part of the year you're in. So what does this mean? Um, so we're going to go over, uh, let's see, what else do I want to go over here? Um, you know, the other thing I just wanted to touch upon is you always hear people talk about, hey, this jobs report could be a, a non-event. Um, there's always trades um, to look at going into the jobs report, things that you could put on for little risk and make money on. That was a trade that we put on in the Tribeca Trade Group room. We put on a GDX strangle uh, for 43 cents. We bought calls, we bought puts, and uh, we hit profit targets as high as 80 cents. So just about a double um, in that trade. So there's always something to do, and there's always positioning that's going on uh, leading into uh, the jobs report. So for example, what did we see? So I always write down um, every day what the best option signals are. You know, some positioning that we saw going into the jobs report, there was a lot of put buying on bonds. Uh, we saw a lot of put buying in TLT. Um, we saw weeklies, we saw September, uh, big puts trade in TLT. And then we also saw TBT calls trade. So somebody was expect somebody was thinking that the, the jobs report was going to be pretty good. So you know that uh, that was a little bit of insight for what um, the big money players were looking for. Um, and then similarly, we saw a lot of put buying in GDXJ. That was something that we talked about in the room. Um, it wasn't just one order; it was several different things. GDXJ, which is the junior miners, I call these. Um, uh, GDX on steroids, uh, junior mi miners, which is, you know, somebody knows what they're doing. If they pick, if they decide to pick puts, a big put option in GDXJ, they know what they're doing um, because GDXJ is, is more volatile than GDX. They're, they're going out and they're, they're picking something that they really think is going to move. Well, that sure as hell uh, worked. Um, GDXJ really sold off hard on Friday. Um, so that was, you know, compelled us to compelled me to get into that uh, strangle play, you know, down 3.4%. So there was money to be, there's always money to be made on these jobs numbers, regardless of what you hear on Twitter or in the financial media. There's always something, um, a small trade that you could take that's got a chance um, to make a, you know, a double or a triple um, that day if you play your cards right. So, um, so that's what we saw. Um, also, you know, what was noticeable on Friday was the move in banks. You could look at um, KBE, for example. Um, KBE is all banks uh, up 3.2%. You know, a lot of people say banks and they talk about XLF. Um, keep in mind, XLF is not banks. Banks, is, that's, it's financials. Um, so if you hear this, if you hear people on, on financial media, on Twitter, quote XLF, and they, they say this is the bank ETF, it is not. Banks are only about 40% um, of this ETF. You have a lot of other things that can counteract the move in this ETF. So if you're looking for a pure play in banks, it's KBE, KRE, not XLF. Um, in any event, you know, so what, you know, there are REITs in here, there are insurance companies, but if you look at these charts, a little bit revealing. Um, a KBE, which again is all banks, is trying to get into the yearly value area. So uh, the level that I'm watching there is 3306. If you go back to XLF, it doesn't mean you can't trade XLF, but you just want to know what it is. Um, it is actually in the value area, the yearly value area. You know, I think you could see possibly a move to the top of value, which is 2514. So only, uh, you know, only a dollar move. So that's really why I don't have any long swing trades on in financials. Um, do I think it's a good barometer for the market? You know, I think if the banks manage to rally, it's going to be great for the market. So, you know, you don't always have to be in this particular sector. Um, you can kind of just take it as a, as a sentiment indicator. If the banks are going to do well, usually the market does pretty well. Um, take a look. There's also a buy signal on the Raptor indicator, big green arrow here. Um, this just crossed over on uh, the weekly chart, so maybe about a week or two, but um, I think we could see possibly a push uh, to 2511. Also, the other thing I want to do before I really start to get in involved in financials is I want to see longer dated swing trades. I want to see somebody start to purchase a couple different banks going out to Jan you know, going out to November or January, maybe even further now that we're um, already in August. So before I really get involved in a swing trade in financials or, or look to go long banks, 
I want to see the money. I want to see big money um, start to get involved in it first. Um, I want to do that just to kind of make sure. So I don't really want to speculate and just, I, you know, technically it looks good, but I want to have, um, you know, in my model, I like to use technicals and I also use to, and I also like to see flows, whether they're option flows or um, inflows going into ETFs. We're not seeing that completely yet. So, um, you know, I think you could kind of wait and be patient um, with this move and wait till you see some heavy buying in the group first. So what did we see? Um, what are some of the good, you know, the interesting trades that we saw in options? And again, I'm, you know, I'm looking for longer dated positions. You know, we see a lot of uh, front month trades, somebody looking for, you know, one or two day move, a big pop. You know, I'm really looking for um, longer dated positions, positions that I can kind of put on and hold for that are not going to be super, super sensitive because of the front month. Um, so I'm looking for longer dated swing uh, longer dated swing trades. Um, so what did we see last week? Uh, well, first of all, we saw dip buying in retail, um, and this was more short dated. So, you know, retail was down, I think it was Tuesday. Uh, you know, we said in the Tribeca trade room, it just didn't make sense to me. There was one day when, when XRT, the retail ETF was down two and a half percent. Um, that was basically just on the auto numbers. Ford had, uh, bad numbers. Uh, GM did as well and uh, bad monthly sales numbers. But however, I didn't think it was sufficient to bring the whole consumer area or retail group down on that. And sure enough, um, you know, these rebounded quite nicely on Friday. So, you know, that's a short data position. You know, we saw a lot of dip buying in selective names, uh, TJX, raw stores. Uh, those were some good signals last night, last week. Um, we also saw right when this move was happening, um, on this particular day, uh, let's see, where was that? On this day, um, we actually broke for a second day lower and then came back. Um, this day we saw steady buying in Gap stores. We saw steady buying in Macy's. Um, those were some good signals. Anyway, that's last week. I wanna get to uh, what looks good for next week and where we saw those longer dated swing swing trade positions. Um, back in the semis group, um, you know, NVIDIA, big trade going out to October. Um, I did get involved in this trade. So I'm, I took a couple targets in NVIDIA, but I'm still long. Um, applied materials, very chunky position. Um, they do have a sales meeting uh, right around this, this time, or excuse me, not a sales meeting, a, a analyst meeting uh, right before this. So it could be that they're, you know, uh, that's why they chose this particular strike. You know, nev nevertheless, it is huge. It was huge buying. And, you know, we looked at the chart in the trading room. Chart looks great. When we saw this activity, you know, it's, um, you know, Applied Materials is one of those names that got overbought. You know, didn't really want to be in this while it got to, um, broke to 52 week highs uh, because it was pretty overbought. However, um, over the last uh, two weeks, it kind of came in a bit. Um, and it just jumped down to, you know, the blue line on my charts is the 20 period exponential moving average. You know, so it, it came right in there and you see this kind of floating hammer in an uptrend, which is a great place to, to see that the trend is holding. Um, and right here is where we saw that uh, unusual option activity. So, you know, not perfectly the low, but damn near uh, close to it. So um, I did go long applied materials, um, lucky enough to hit, um, but I'd say one and a half price targets, uh, profit targets on this trade and this way I could take some money off the table and let the rest ride. So um, NVIDIA applied materials and then, so that was Thursday and then on Friday, kind of the same same group saw activity. Uh, we saw a nice call buyer. This was a little bit more short, short dated. Um, so I did not take this trade in Intel. I was also long, um, long applied materials and long uh, NVIDIA. So I didn't want to go crazy exposed into semis, but we also saw this in Qualcomm as well. This was an also October position. Uh, we also saw this uh, January position in ON uh, semiconductors. Uh, they actually report on Monday. So pretty interesting that somebody is buying longer dated calls in this name. Uh, we saw this play out with um, Symantec on Thursday, I believe that was. Here it is. Big long data position. This trade really worked out. This was also a trade that we took in the Tribeca trade group. Uh, huge profits. I think we got into this for like 40, 44, 45 cents, was able to hit a profit target. Uh, I think as north as high as 70 cents. I want to say 80, but maybe it was 70 cents. Um, so we saw something similar, not quite as large, you know, this was 35,000 
contracts. But uh, interesting, kind of fits the same theme though, long dated uh, call buying, you know, and if the earnings don't do much, you know, you can kind of keep that as a backstop to, to possibly go into the group. Um, another name that I'm looking at, which we've seen steady uh, call buying, Microsoft. And the fact this was a September position, but we've seen them hit November calls twice now. Should have this someplace. There we go. Um, November 60 calls. They actually traded. This was on, back on 729, but it looks like they added to this position as well last week. So I am in this longer dated swing position. Um, you know, this is kind of fits the old tech theme. But if you look at the chart and Microsoft, this thing is trying to break out here. And let's look at the weekly chart of Microsoft. So a couple of trades that I like, um, and I'm in for longer dated swing trades, Microsoft in that tech, still in that tech theme and semiconductors. Again, you know, let me just look, show you one thing that worries me a little bit as uh, semis are breaking out here. And again, very similar to the applied materials chart. You could see that it did get a bit overbought on the RSI. You know, this was a place to take profits. Notice it, all it did was just burn off some overbought levels, found support. Uh, this is SMH, the semi ETF. It found some support right at the top of value. And it looks like semis want to move higher here. The only thing to be a little cautious about, um, we are getting a little bit overbought here. So RSI is coming back to overbought levels. Same thing with XLK, the technology ETF, uh, returning back to overbought levels. It was overbought, quick move in and a quick move higher. Also the Qs. So I do a scan, uh, an RSI scan to look to see if anything is over 70. The only sectors right now that are, or only areas of the market that are a little bit overbought with an RSI over 70 is technologies, semis, and biotech as well. Uh, biotech, I also have my eye on. I wanna see a little bit of a pullback. Um, and then I'm gonna look for a long swing in, in IBB or an XBI, the smaller, uh, this smaller cap weighted ETF. So um, what we did, if so you can be long these names. Here's my position, my swing, swing trading positions. You know, so I, like I said, I am long um, applied materials. Um, I'm also long Cisco going out to uh, April of next year. I'm long Microsoft. And um, I'm also long the video, but what I also have done, you know, in case we get a little bit of a short term pullback, you know, you take a look at the VIX right now. You know, it's very, it's very cheap to hedge yourself right now. The VIX is right now at 1139, you know, and basically when it, the VIX gets this low, um, you know, it's, it's very cheap to buy some hedges. So, you know, I, I'm pretty, uh, my swing trading portfolio is pretty, um, is positioned to the long side. You can see these are all my long positions. I did add a couple shorts. Um, I sold some call spreads in XLK. Um, I also saw uh, sold some call spreads in Qs. Uh, this way, if the market pulls back in the short term, you know, September or in the next couple of weeks, you know, I can um, I'm hedged a little bit, um, and especially those longs that I have for for semis and some of the older technology plays that I have on are a little bit hedged. Um, so that's how I'm positioned. Um, though that is what I think are the best um, longer term trades uh, that I have on. Just to recap, as we're finished four weeks of, um, we're just about through four weeks of earnings season. Uh, we trade earnings in the Tribeca Trade Group. My goal is to have a winning percentage right around 60%. Um, so right now, just to recap for the for the last four weeks, I've got 18 winners, 13 losers, one scratch. Um, so I've got a winning percentage of 58 translated into an ROI, return on investment of 42%. So, you know, I did a whole uh, webinar on having a system for taking earnings trades and trying to get above 50%, trying to get to 60% winning trades. If you do that and you select, the, if you have the right setups um, with calls, using call spreads or selling vol, um, you can achieve that. Um, using the the model approach, um, the systematic approach that I use. You know, last week, um, you know, a little frustrating. Um, you know, the ATVI trade that I took. Um, luckily, I did sell put spreads against uh, buying call spreads, so that trade was 
essentially a scratch. Um, other than that, selling premium worked really well. Um, I was actually looking to sell an iron condor in Tesla. Didn't get fell, filled on the on the call side. Got filled on the puts uh, put side. So nice little profits there. Same thing with Regeneron. Same thing with uh, Data. Unfortunately, whiffed on a couple of these. Um, Pfizer was a whiff. Kate was a whiff. Uh, and First Solar was a whiff. So we had one, two, three, four, and uh, four wins, three losses, and basically one scratch. So slightly above 50%. Um, again, I like to be a, at 60% or better. Or better. So um, a little bit under what I'm trying to achieve. Um, the only play I have on for Monday, uh, sold some put spreads in AGN. So we'll see how that works out. So um, take a look at our website. That's the end of the video for today. Uh, Tribeca Trade Group, uh, we go over the setups at length. Um, you can get involved. Um, you go to our page, TribecaTradeGroup.com, and um, you could sign up. You could try it out for a week for absolutely free. Uh, why do I do this promotion um, for free? Because I think that you're going to, after you know, trying us out for a few days, you know, I think you're going to sign up. So um, check us out here, TribecaTradeGroup.com. Go to our products, and you want to do the monthly uh, program to get that week free. To check us out, no obligation whatsoever. Uh, we'll also be doing a webinar on Wednesday about position sizing for swing trades. Um, so you can follow me at C Fromhertz on Twitter um, to get that uh, to find out about that webinar. Thank you for watching the video and have a great weekend.